Well, first off, Jim, I mean, thanks for taking the time to do this. I know. I'm sure it's a, a busy schedule, especially with Dan being out. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting weirder. It's getting stranger. Right? I mean, it, nothing about this last ride off into the sunset seems... I didn't know I was going to have to work this hard, you know? I mean, people want to talk to me about this last ride, and uh, I, I get that... You know, Michigan is in a special spot, and it's our last year of broadcasting the games. And if I'd have sent this script at the beginning of the year to a screenwriter, they'd have never made the movie. <laughs> you can't, this isn't true. It's a Hallmark thing. So I get that. But I didn't know I was going out with this many things to do. I was kind of hoping I'd be backing away from it instead of getting busier. I mean, in your career doing this, between the Lions and the Wolverines, a playoff game is a rarity. Michigan's never been in the college football playoffs. The Lions were only, I think, in nine playoff games in my 31 years with them. So this is special. Uh, we did get uh, at the Lions to an NFC championship game where they got blown out by Washington. But to see Michigan beat Ohio State and win a Big Ten championship in this last year when they weren't expected to even finished third in their own division. It's a special, special year, and uh, I couldn't be more grateful, couldn't be happier for it to happen. And uh, like I said, if you'd have told me this in September, I'd have said it's never going to happen, and no screenwriter would have accepted the script. Yeah, I, I know that uh, you said the work has sort of take, built momentum along the way, and you were hoping to kind of back off into retirement. But... Have you been able to at least reflect a little bit on, on what this ride has been like? Yeah, I have, and, 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 but I've done, I did that. Like, Dan and I made this decision back in January. So the reflections came all summer long and all that kind of stuff. As we headed into the season and we made the announcement before the Western Michigan game, Dan and I didn't want to be the story. We wanted Michigan football to be the story. And thank God this team has done what it's done because they have become the story. Dan and I only wanted to be a sidebar. That's, we're offensive linemen. We don't want headlines. We just go out, do our job, go back to the huddle, get the next play, put our hand in the dirt, and go do it again. And so that's kind of how we felt about it. But, yeah, being the last year, I have reflected on all the things that have gone on before. And more than being sad or, or missing any of it, I just feel grateful. I feel so grateful that I've had the opportunity to do this for 43 years, to see the things I've seen for my team, my university, where I graduated, where I played, to have the broadcast opportunity to do these games and meet guys like Bo, Lloyd, Mo, uh, some of the great players, you know, the Leeches, the Wanglers, the Carters, uh, the Braylon Edwards, the Desmond Howards, the Charles Woodsons. I'm just so grateful that I've had the opportunity. I've lived a, lived a charmed life. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody knows, though, that a program's only as good as its offensive line. Oh. <laughs> so. The heart and soul of football team is the offensive line. If you don't win the, the, the game up front offensively, you're not going to win the game. And, and that, to me, is, uh, of course, I'm an old offensive lineman, so you expect you're going to get that. You'd hear something different from a quarterback. You'd hear something different from a running back or a receiver. But from an offensive lineman, uh, we are the best team guys out there because we don't really care about the headlines. All we care about winning. All we care about is making the other guys better. And I think that that's uh, the offensive lineman's credo. Make the other guys better and win, and we're happy. And that works for me. An offensive line is good as a group. How difficult will this be to be in this moment without Dan next to you? It's going to be hard. I mean, when I found out it, 24 hours, I was morose. And, and again, it's about his deal. I feel bad for him uh, more than I do for me. I mean, I'm still here, but I know how much this means to him. So, you know, I feel his pain, if you will. It's just like after we beat Ohio State, and there was a moment on the radio we were doing post game, and I said, Dan, as happy as I am for me, I'm even more happy for you because he had spent eight years and had not broadcast a Michigan victory over Ohio State on the radio. And he had talked to me in the summer times about how much he wanted to do that. I want to beat Ohio State. I want to have that opportunity. So to have that opportunity in that last game and the kind of game it was, the emotional 
outpouring of the fans, the team, how they did it, what it meant from a standpoint of eight years they haven't beaten them, the frustration, all that coming out. For Dan to experience that, I was as happy for him for that than I was for me having the opportunity to broadcast it. So yeah, having him not here, that hurts me. Maybe a little more than it even does him, I think, because I want him to experience this. That's, I think, how an offensive lineman thinks. They want the other guys to have a great time, too. And uh, when they can't, it hurts a little bit. Do you guys feel a, a little bit like college seniors again, knowing that <laughs> one loss and this is it, you know, the season's over, the next game's not guaranteed sort of a, a mentality. You've yeah, been through this. I agree. That's the mentality. The next game's not guaranteed, but we've been doing this before. We know this. It's, you, when you're involved in athletics, you know that, you know, you get to the end of the season, there is no next game. There, and even though you play, the injury situation could happen where there is no next game. And so we all live with that. We all understand it. We all realize that's the possibility that exists. And we go about our business. And I think that's kind of the way we look at this one. You play them one at a time. You have this game against Georgia. And if you win this one, you've got another game the next week. But what's most important is the now. And that's this game against Georgia. So you don't start thinking ahead. You just start thinking about what is and make sure you do the best job possible in what's facing you now and then worry about the future after this one's over. But, I mean, for you personally, it's got to feel a, a little different because you know that next season isn't guaranteed, that there will not be a next <laughs> season. So the next game could be the last game. I mean, do you let yourself think about that, that this could be it? You know, not really. I, 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 I know that sounds weird, but that decision was made back in January. So, I mean, I knew that Ohio State was going to be my last broadcast in Michigan Stadium. And I was a little surprised that I wasn't as emotional as maybe I think I should have been. But I've been there for 43 years. It's been so many great memories and great moments. I'm just so fortunate and so grateful to have had them. So, yeah, I know that it's the last, but I don't feel bittersweet. I don't feel sad. I feel like uh, it's the end of one thing and I'm moving on to the beginning of the next. And what I've had has been better than most. And I know you, you've already talked a little bit about what, what is next for you in retirement and just enjoying life. I've got a lot of things going. I mean, I'm still involved in Michigan football. I've got, I want to do an audio book with some of the interviews that I did for my Tales from Michigan Stadium books. I've got a podcast that I do. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just not going to be broadcasting football games. And it'll be an opportunity for me and my wife to travel, do things, and not be basically my summer was over in july you know and my off season started in the middle of january with a spring game in april and so now all of that changes so i've got half a year now to kind of play with and see what's going to happen just like most other retirees i'm not going to go away i'll still work and i'll still be involved but uh, i just won't be on the radio calling michigan football games You've been around a lot of Michigan teams. Uh, you've been around a lot of Harbaugh teams. Uh, wh what's different about this one? I think this team cares about each other so much. I think that they have this bond. They talk about a brotherhood. Every team does. But I think if you look at that Wisconsin game in Wisconsin this year where they started doing the jump around with Wisconsin fans, they won the game right then. They have this belief in themselves that they're enjoying each other's company, they're enjoying the journey, and uh, they're enjoying the process. And let's have fun while we do it. And that jump around where they basically stole the stadium from the Wisconsin Badgers. I mean, Wisconsin looked at them from their sideline and went, hey, what are you guys doing over there jumping around having fun? That's our job. At that point, you saw this team was a little bit different. And I think you saw it throughout the season, how they came back how they reveled in each other's success. One other thing about that, you look at a picture from the broadcast, Ohio State, Michigan. J.J. McCarthy comes in, throws a pass complete, I think, to Roman Wilson down the sideline. They have a shot from this field-level camera 
over the shoulder of J.J. down to Cade McNamara, who's coming into the game. And as he's coming into the game, he's looking back at J.J. and he points at him like, great job, well done. And J.J. comes out and Cade goes in. That kind of relationship, that kind of way to go, I'm going to play now and you're going to sit, but reveling in the other guy's success, that I think has galvanized this football team into being really a special group that enjoys and loves playing with each other. And Jim, is, Jim Harbaugh has helped, I think, engender that by how he's treated them and how he's let them go. And uh, this is a special group. You've got a unique relationship with Jim Harbaugh, and I think you probably see him at a different level than most fans do and certainly most media. How has he changed this year? How is he different, especially in this moment here leading up to the, the college football playoff? I, I, you know, it's hard to say he's changed because he's still the intense competitor that he always has been. But I've known Jim since he's a player. I've known his dad since he was a coach at Michigan. Uh, they're lovely, wonderful people, his dad and his mom. And, and I think that Jim, last year going through that contract negotiation, taking a pay cut, and then hiring a young staff, to be honest, I think it re-energized him a little bit. I mean, he went off and started to lose some weight, got back into playing shape, got back into his weight when he was playing quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. I think it kind of re-energized him and got him kind of back into the swing of things that this should be fun. This should be the best time of my life. And let's enjoy it. Let's get into it, work, do the things that are necessary to win, but have fun while we're doing it. And I think that that, with the younger staff, the Mike Hart's, the Ron Bellamy's, the Mike McDonald's, and some of the guys that he brought in, that's all, I think, been a combination. And it's, I think, rolled into what Jim's personality has become this year. And I think he likes it. And I know he likes this team. And I can't tell you how excited I am for him, for this team, and for Michigan football fans. Are you having the best time of your life this year? I am. This is that, hey, like I said, you can call it a farewell tour, call it whatever you want, but when you win, everything's better. Monty Clark said it best way back, the old Lions coach, winning is the best deodorant. And the fact that I'm doing it with one of my best friends in Dan Deardorff, and the opportunity to call a season like this, I mean, it doesn't get any better. And I am having the best year of my broadcast life and uh, can't wait to see where it goes and if we can make it all the way to the finish. I mean, what do they have to do against Georgia? What, what are their chances through your eyes? We talked about it a little bit ago. You got to win that battle up front. Uh, the offensive line has got to play well against their defensive line. They're very athletic. Their linebackers are blitzing like crazy all the time. You must protect Cade McNamara. You must continue to run the football. You must be balanced against this defense. If this defense from Georgia gets you one dimensional and you can only pass the football, you can be in trouble. And I think that that's what's going to be the key to this game. I think special teams are going to be really important and mistakes. But it's, it's that battle, the offensive line of Michigan, the defensive line, the defensive front seven of Georgia. That's going to be the real game within the game that I think is going to give one or the other the edge. And then just to, for my knowledge, do you have a number or know off the top of your head how many games you called? Oh, no, I don't. It's, it's uh, college and football, uh, college and pro is probably over a thousand. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I've got a, a, a book at home, how many Lions games I called. Because I, I, at one point somebody asked me, what's your record? And it was not very good. <laughs> Lions, the Lions record over those 31 years has not been that great. I was under 500 by quite a bit. But I have not really checked in my Michigan from, from 1979. I could go back and count from 1979. I missed one game. It was the 84 Holiday Bowl between BYU and Michigan because there were broadcast rights issues that whoever I was working for didn't have any rights to broadcast that game from the Holiday Bowl. But every other game I broadcast. So I don't know how many, uh, but college and pro over a thousand, I think. And you've been doing it at Michigan for 31 years? 43. 43? Yeah, started in 79. Okay. Started in 79 doing, you don't remember it, you're too young, but on TV was a precursor to HBO cable. They had a little set-top box. You put it on there and you get first-run movies. Started at 8 o'clock at night and went till 11. Well, 
the guy locally in Detroit said, I want to do some local programming. What can I get and put on at midnight Saturdays? So he said, I'll do Michigan football and get it on a tape delay basis. So he had me and Larry Adderley and Larry Osterman at one point, Ray Lane, broadcast the games, put it on videotape, and at midnight on Saturday it would be replayed on, on TV. Then that became Pro-Am Sports System. And I worked doing the same thing for them. And then I started doing radio in the early to mid-80s. And from then on, I've been doing radio for different outlets till 2021. <laughs> it's been great. I, like I said, I am the luckiest guy on the face of the planet. Lou Gehrig had nothing on me. When he said I'm the luckiest guy on the face of the earth, I can feel Lou Gehrig right now because I feel the same way.